Hello all and welcome to this short demonstration video on charge particle analysis using Opera simulation software. On today's video we will look at the utility of the Opera simulation environment for the simulation of X-ray tubes. At your left on the screen you can see a representation of the model we will analyze with, with some of the relevant parts signalized. Note that the enclosure is not present and in this case the model will be filled with air. And this is the workflow we will follow during this video. By following these steps, I will demonstrate some of the features of Opera simulation software, like defining geometries, exploiting symmetries, defining boundary conditions, primary and secondary emission model specification, and how to control the mesh density of our model. By the end of the video, I will show you some of the post-processing tasks we can perform in the Opera 3D post-processor. Okay, now let us begin by building the geometric model. And to do this, we are going to use the Opera 3D modeler. The modeler can be started from the Opera manager. Once in the modeler, we are going to use primitive and Boolean operations to create our model. So let us start by creating the cathode from a cylinder. At this point, we can enter our dimensions and define a material name and data storage level. The data storage level is used to determine properties when two or more bodies overlap. When doing a volume operation, the properties from the entity with the highest data storage level are used in that case. On the following step, we will see the use of the data storage level definition. On this example, we are going to use a curve cathode to add a focusing function in the cathode. To obtain this, I will create an sphere and perform a boolean operation between the sphere and the cylinder. Basically, this sequence cuts away a spherical cap from the cylinder and that will form the cathode. Then, at the end of the boolean operation, the properties of the remaining cell will correspond to the cylinder properties for having the highest storage level. Now, considering that the calculation of the meter electron current depends on having an accurate solution close to the cathode surface and that the electric field will vary rapidly in the direction normal to the cathode surface, we're going to create an additional cell just outside the surface of the cathode to control, to control the mesh size. Note that the cathode and the cylinder are overlapping, shown here by the tinting color between them. Now to solve this overlapping, first select the cylinder and then the cathode, pressing the space bar will allow you to select the cathode while it's hidden by the air. Right click on the air and select cell properties from the context menu. And from here we can specify mesh size and considering the accuracy needed, we will define the element type as, qu as quadratic. Additionally to the previous step to improve the mesh, let us define a layer mesh in front of the emitter. To define layering, first we have to pick a face and then define the number of layers and the duration of the layering. Note that in Opera, faces on cells have an orientation in a normal direction. In general, the face normal points upwards from a cell. The face direction can be displayed and changed if needed. To change the orientation of a face, point at one of the vectors and double click using the left mouse button. This will reverse the normal orientation. After that, we can define the face properties of the core face of the cathode by choosing the layering method to mesh and entering the number of layers and the offset. Next, let us define a guard, guard ring around the cathode and I will perform a chamfer operation on the internal circle of this element. This guard ring will be will use the same potential as the cathode. Once we have this, we can go and define the other section corresponding to the anode. First, I will define the anode block, which will contain the beam target and provides the electrical connection with the target. I will create two cylinders with the same material and data storage properties, but with different sizes. The idea is to perform 
um, loft operation with them. To do this, I select the end face of both cylinders and then select loft from the top menu or by using the right mouse button. Then the beam target is inserted uh, at the middle of the anode block, formed from a short cylinder capped with a cone. I will do a boolean operation to eliminate the overlapping between both the beam target and the anode block at this point. Now to control the mesh size along the path of the bin, it is convenient to introduce a, cylindric a cylindrical free space volume. The mesh element size for this element will be of 2 and I will use an, as the element shape preference for this element hexahedral and prismatic. Now we need to I mean, we need to define the background of our analysis and the analysis volume needs to be completely by filling in the space between the electrodes, basically. The easiest way to do this is to define a cylinder enclosing the entire geometry. And this will be our background. Okay, now before starting to specify electro voltage materials and emission characteristics, the analysis type will be set to charge particles. This will appropriately tailor the dialogues that now need to be populated with auctions specific to this type of analysis. Now, the metal surface of the cathode, the wall ring, and the anode block, and also the anode, need to be set to a specified voltage. And the modeler has a useful facility to help with this process. The cell can peak and the selection can be transferred to all the faces of the cell. And I will start by picking the cathode and the wall ring. And this same sequence of operation will be used then for the anode and the anode block. Now two special sets of boundary condition labels need to be set on the emitting surface of the cathode and the anode. And that's because emission properties are also attached to boundary condition labels. The curved front surface of the cathode should be selected and it is boundary condition label changed to emitter. The conical surface of the anode should then be selected and its boundary conditions label should be set to anode. Now, once the boundary condition labels have been defined, the voltage can be set on the surface of the electrodes, the anode and the cathode. Okay. Now, the next step is to define primary and secondary emission models for the cathode and the anode, respectively. In this case, thermionic field effect and plasma prim primary emission auctions are available in the charged particle simulation, and secondary emission auctions are also supported. In this example, a Langmuir Fry thermionic emission model will be attached to the emitter surface of the cathode and uh, secondary emission characteristics will be added to the anode to produce basic backscatter secondary particles. Okay, up to this point, the model has been created and the space charge effects could now be simulated. However, the model is rotationally symmetric and it can be reduced in size by exploding symmetry. Now we need to create the model body to join the components and apply the symmetry. Previously, appropriate element sizes have been defined for the cells in this example model. Opera will produce a surface mesh guided by the element size specified in the model, together with a maximum for the, whole, for the model as a whole. Finally, an Opera database can now be prepared and immediately solved. Notice here that we are giving a name to our database and setting the units 
for this project. Now, finally, let us see some of the post-processing tasks we can perform with Opera to visualize results. First, the trajectory results for uh, primary and secondary particles are stored during the simulation. And by default, the display will show a different color for each track, as I'm showing you here. We are interested in both primary and secondary emissions. Now, by changing the color, options by changing the color options to be color function and typing TOF in the color function box change the colors of the tracks to show the time of flight from the emitter. Now, in addition to this, the trajectories on a 3D model, they can also be plotted on the 2D graph using the graph trajectories tool button. In this case, we are displaying the time of fly as a 2D graph. I'm going to use a color function again. Okay. And also, the post processor provides facilities to define 2D surfaces and plot the fields on these surfaces. Okay. The surfaces can be quadrilaterals, in Cartesian, cylindrical, or spherical coordinates. In this case, we want to display the Z component of the electric field. Now, one last post-processing task. In this case, let us obtain the beam current density. Okay, The current density distribution in a beam of charged particle consisting of many trajectories can be plotted using the intersection facility. In this case, let us create a density map and select current density. This ends our demonstration video. I appreciate all for your time. I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Wish you all a happy simulation and looking forward to see you on our next video.